guys, Brian here from Liquid Concepts. So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about pinholes. And uh, what I mean by that is that pinholes in the film or in your part after you get it done uh, dipping. And so uh, we've had a lot of calls, a lot of questions on the comments and everything. And so we thought we'd shoot a quick video on it and show you guys exactly what you're looking for as well as what you need to do to help prevent the pinholes from happening. So um, got a couple of quick little things here. So we've got a couple of uh, speed shapes. We've already painted these, uh, nothing special, just the regular white paint. And so they'll be good to show the pinholes and everything like that. And so we figured we'd just go ahead since uh, everything else is um, always on carbon fiber, why not use a carbon fiber as well? Um, so we have our CF282. And so this is just our regular carbon. If you've seen any of our other videos, uh, you can see that um, we use this quite a bit. It's a really popular carbon. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing this, we'll link a, uh, a we'll put a link in the description below, so that way you can check it out as well. Um, all right, so. Uh, we're gonna do two separate dips and so what I want to show you guys is is that uh, we're gonna have one dip that's gonna be correctly activated and then we're gonna have one dip that's going to be under activated and so what that's gonna be is is that the under activated film is going to not want to wrap around as much it's going to create a lot of pinholes after the dip as well as it's just not going to look as good and so um, hopefully by showing you these two examples right here you'll be able to see exactly what they look like and hopefully how to prevent them for the future so let's go ahead let's get started we'll get these cut lay them on the water and show you guys the end result and as usual my knife is gone I swear to God got the knife back let's get started all right so let's go ahead and uh, put these in the water so again we just got our film right here set that in and of course, we got one minute on the water at 80 to 90 degrees. Right now, we're sitting at about 83. And so, um, we'll go ahead and let this sit for the one minute and then spray it with the activator. Now, this one that we're going to be spraying is going to be the correctly activated uh, film. So, we're going to show you pretty much what you want to see whenever you activate the film as it's going across, as you're spraying it or as you're dipping it. So uh, you're gonna get a nice glassed out smooth surface, which is exactly what you want. You do not want anything as far as like a little bit of a hazy look to it or anything like that. So uh, let's grab some gloves on and then we'll get to spraying the activator. All right, so one minute, let's go ahead and spray the activator. So we're gonna just do one pass, just nice and smooth right across here. All right, so now we can take a look at this and we can see that we've got a really nice glassed out smooth surface all the way around the entire film, which is exactly what we want. So that's gonna tell me that the film is ready to be dipped and all of the inks that are sitting on top of the film itself, they're all in a liquid state, so therefore it will be able to stretch as best as possible. So we got our part right here and then we'll just go down nice and slow down into the water. And you'll notice that it's wrapping around really good all the way around the edges and all the way around the backside as well. And even if I just take my hand right here and I just stick it right down in there, you can see that it just wraps very nicely all the way around the entire part of my hand. And so, of course, bringing up the part that we just dipped, everything looks good. And of course, to check it, we can pretty much rub it like this and everything is good. So that's gonna be a good dip. All right, so let's put this in the rinse station. Uh, we'll grab another one, throw it in here and show you guys the differences and show you guys what happens after we go to rinse it. So stay tuned. Okay, so we saw what happened with a correctly activated part. So now let's throw a under activated part in there, show you guys the end result, and I think you're definitely going to be able to see a big difference, especially after we rinse it. And of course, you'll see the infamous pinholes that are going to show up 
all around the entire part after we go to dip it. So here we go. So again, one minute on the water, 80 to 90 degrees, and we are gonna be spraying it with the Liquid Concepts Activator. And of course we have one minute. So uh, pretty much on this one, what we're gonna do is, is you notice how whenever we did it the first time, we had a nice smooth, even pass, just straight across, just nice and easy, just like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do almost double that. And so uh, I kinda wanted to show you that if you take this and you go like that quick, then you're not getting enough activator on there. And so there's gonna be a couple of telltale signs. Number one, it's not gonna be glassed out like what you saw beforehand. Number two, as it wraps around, it's going to wanna wrinkle and not flow around the part. And then of course, number three, we're gonna get the pinholes just like what we've been talking about. So let's grab some gloves on and get started. All right, so we got one minute. And so now we're going to be at the same height same everything as far as settings on the gun. We're just going to increase the speed as we're going across. So we'll take this and spray it like that. Now again, you can see how it's somewhat glassed out, but you can see that there's a lot of hazing in this area right in here. And then also even in right in here as well. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab the other speed shape here and we're going to dip it the exact same way just like what we did before. Now what you're going to notice is, is that you're going to see it wrinkle and you see that wrinkling that you're getting as I'm going down into the water. It's not wanting to stretch hardly at all. And so you see that wrinkle right there? That tells me that it wasn't fully activated whenever I'm going down into the water. Now pulling it back out you can see it looks totally different. Uh, the, the coloring and everything, it's all open and closed. Uh, it's not as uniform all the way around. And you can see that we've got different areas that are lighter, that are darker, and then of course lighter again. So this pretty much is not going to work. And so another thing that we can do is, is after we go to rinse it, you'll be able to start seeing a lot of those pinholes. And so, Let's go over here, let's start rinsing it, and I'll show you guys the end result to it. All right, so we've got our underactivated part right here. We have our activated part right here. So let's start rinsing these, and then we'll show you exactly what looks, what's the difference between the two after you go to rinse those as well. So let's get the, uh, uh, the water nozzle here and we'll start rinsing these by hand. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these things rinsed. Uh, we'll turn the rinse station on and get it started. So here we go. Now you can use something like this right here. Uh, this is just, just a nice, easy, uh, flat fan pattern, but you can also use even like a shower like this right here. And so we'll kind of start with this one right here. And so as we're rinsing this, everything is still staying in place. Everything is still uh, intact as far as the part itself. Now, mainly, of course, we're only just rinsing off the PVA that's on here. Uh, it's the slimy part that you can uh, peel. And so by rinsing it like this, it doesn't take very long and you can start to feel that there's not very much left after it's rinsed off, even just by just this little bit right here. Now, we're just gonna quickly do this, so uh, normally it would probably need a little bit more rinsing, but this will give you a good idea as far as the difference between correctly activated, which is gonna be right here, and then under activated, which is right here. So feels like everything is pretty much off of there. There might be a few little spots on the corners or something, but all in all, everything is good to go. So we've got our correctly activated part right here and everything looks good. So let's go ahead and start rinsing the under activated part. And so now we can quickly see, just as I'm not even moving my hand over it, 
and just in this little bit of time that I'm putting the water on it, you can start to see we're getting a lot of these pinholes all the way through. And so what that's telling me is that I don't have enough activator on my actual part, so therefore it's not sticking to the part itself. So if we keep rinsing, then of course more and more is just going to keep flaking off. We can see that there's a little spot right there that if we just sit there and keep rubbing it like this, it will literally just keep coming off. And of course that right there is not what we want. Okay, so after we got everything rinsed, as you can see, we've pretty much just dried these off really quickly. Um, you can totally see a big difference between the correctly activated part and then an underactivated part. And again, um, same water, same everything. The only difference was that we just went faster. Now, uh, that pretty much entails just underactivated in general. There's a lot of things that could go into going with underactivated, um, but uh, in our case, we just went a little bit faster just to kind of shoot this on the video. But um, also uh, to kind of, uh, I guess, show you guys a little bit more on this right here, let's say that you're doing a part and you got to do a double dip. And so if you take your film and, or your film, if you take your tape like this right here, and then you put it on your part. Now again, I'm not pushing hard. I'm not just trying to really, you know, push it down hard, but I'm just mainly just lightly just setting it on there like that. So the other thing that you want to make sure of is, is that whenever you under activate a part, um, the tape, if you are going to do like a double dip or you're trying to put tape over your film, you are pretty much not going to work. It's not going to work. And so um, what I mean by that is, is that if you under activate your film right here. Now, again, we can already see that this is way under activated. Um, you know, we already saw it chipping from the, uh, the rinse station. So if I just lightly, just barely, just lightly push that on there like that, and then I go to peel this off, that is exactly what's going to happen. It's actually going to peel off your film. And so the main reason is, is because the film actually never um, embedded itself into the paint. And that's really critical in this entire process. And so, um, of course, you would be pretty mad if you go and you try to do a double dip on like a gun stock or something like that. You put some tape down thinking that everything was great and then it pulls it right up. So yes, that does suck. That's happened to me. That's happened to pretty much everybody in this industry. But uh, the, the, the takeaway to that is that it's under activated. So on that particular film, whichever film you're using, it needs more activator on that film to be able to bond correctly into the paint that you've already applied down. Now, of course, you have to make sure that the paint is correct for the film itself. Um, and that's gonna be a totally separate topic. Uh, we'll get into that later on or something, but um, definitely make sure that you correctly activate the, um, the film to correctly bond into the part or else this is going to happen right here. And probably you could even take that, yeah, and just scratch that with your finger and it will literally just start peeling right off and coming right off. So definitely don't want that. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on under activated film or anything hydrographics related, definitely leave them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you on anything hydrographics related or even if this if this right here has happened to you because again, I know it's happened to me um, and it's just one of those things you just live and learn and then you gotta redo it and then you know how to fix it at least now. So um, if you haven't already, definitely hit the subscribe button we'd love to have you subscribe to our weekly tips and tricks on anything hydrographics related i'm brian from liquid concepts and this is how we customize your world we'll see you guys next time